bowl. It makes your appetite improve. She looks around. She quickly nuts three bowls, brim full of porridge oats. Almost just standing on her feet, she grabs a spoon and starts to eat. I say again how would you feel if you had had a lovely meal and some delinquent little tart broke in and got a little laugh. But wait, that's not the worst of it. Now comes the most distressing bit. But of course a house part wife and all your happy married life you collected lovely things like gilded cherubs wearing wings. And furniture by Chippendale bought at some famous auction But your most special value thing. She doesn't care. She doesn't mind. And now she plucks her fat behind. <laughs> on this precious dainty chair, I crunch. It must be on with her. A nice girl would have once exclaimed, Oh dear, oh heavens, oh what a shame. <laughs> Not Goldie, she begins to swear she bellows. What a lousy chair. He uses one disgusting word that will quit. You never know. By now you'll think the little skunk would have the sense to do a bunk. But no, I very much regret. She hasn't nearly finished yet. Deciding she would like her ex, she says, Let's see which bed is best. Here comes the next catastrophe. Most educated people choose to rid themselves of socks and shoes before they clamber into bed, but Goldie didn't give a shred. My filthy shoes are thick with grime, and mud and mush and slush and slime. We're still upon the heel of one. It's something that a dog has done. <laughs> Say once more, what would you think if all this horror of dirt and stink was smeared upon your eider down by some revolt and some clown? Famous stories have no clues to show the girl who moved her shoes. Oh, what a tale of crime on crime. Let's check it for a second time. Crime one, the prosecution's case, she breaks down to someone's place. Crime two, the prosecutor notes, she steals a bowl of pomegranates. Crime three, she breaks a precious chair belonging to the baby bear. Crime four, she smears his spotless sheep with filthy messes from her feet. A judge would say without a blink, ten years old baby in the queen. <laughs> Take a walk to you will see. The little beast gets off scot free. While tiny children near and far shout, Goody, good, a labour apple, jelly, gold, and what we say. Back from the that she got away. Myself, I think I'd rather send young Goldie to a sticky end. Oh, Daddy! cried the baby bear. My porridge gone, it isn't fair. Go upstairs then, the big bear said. Your porridge is upon your bed. As you see Mademoiselle, you'll have to eat her up as well. <laughs> <laughs>
world of words and to be able to deliver them so that you could still understand the story. And if they have worked so hard to show such talented, enthusiastic children, I think it's incredible. Year three and four, can you stand up as well, please? Year three and four. There wasn't one individual star here tonight. Everybody was a star. And um, I think that none of it could have been possible without the hard work and dedication from the staff. They've been ably led by Miss Howley this year. And the staff have worked really tirelessly with some really dedicated parents in doing the props as well. So can we give all the staff a round of applause?